very exciting, right? Is when it comes to 
to relationships and anything, period. It's important to set expectations properly in your first meeting because it's going to set the precedent for the rest of the relationship. And so, for example, if one of these guys were to, you know, take you on a helicopter ride and then treat you to a fourth course meal on the first date, you know, that's something that you might actually expect for the rest of the relationship. And if that person doesn't have the ability or the funds to do that, then you're setting false expectations, and then it's misleading. Do you agree? Right? Yeah. Okay. Vice versa. If there are certain things that we see about you and that you project, we're going to assume that that's what it's going to be throughout the relationship. So if there's a difference or a change in that, it's going to throw us off. We're not going to know what to do. We're going to feel this as well. So it's very important to be open, honest, truthful, and stay authentic to who you are, because that's what we really want. We really want the real you. You know, we don't want, you know, the, the tan, dolled up, you know, layers of makeup, that whole bit. Like, we don't, we don't care about that. Yeah, great, granted, it makes you guys look amazing and sexy and we're attracted to you based on that visually. But long term, those things don't matter. I mean, you need to have an expiration date. It's just basic, you know? And for a lot of us guys, inner beauty is what really isn't the value that you're going to have to bring to the table for us to stay emotionally, spiritually, intellectually engaged. So, having said that, I want to introduce the men here, and uh, we're just going to go out in line. Say your name, age, uh, and relationship status. First of all, I apologize for having a lot of days. I know the finish is going to take my life. And I'm not, I'm not one to make excuses. I don't ride the subway on the weekends, and I usually don't come downtown unless I'm in the taxi or I'm driving. And I didn't realize two of three trains are screwed up. <laughs> Um, so my name is Mark. I'm 43. Uh, relationship status. I'm single. Yeah. Um, you tell me what you do? You yeah, I'm <laughs>
probably in a car ride about a month ago. We're going to my aunt's 60th birthday party, and we were dating about a year, and great communication, great relationship. Uh, with someone prior for eight years, and I learned a lot. That, you know, you want to appreciate what you don't appreciate, what you know, the feedback. So, we're on this car ride, pouring rain out, I'm going from you know, Central Jersey out to Suffolk County. Two and a half hours, three hours, it took to get out there, and we tracking the car. So, I'm thinking to myself, you know, dating her in a while, you know, she's going to meet, to meet my mother's side of the family, and all of a sudden, uh, we're tracking, and she just, you know, laughing, we're having a good time, and I just, I kind of like, got the vibe, like, this is, you know, a great woman that I want to be in terms of, she can be yelling at me, man, you know, meeting family, or sitting in traffic, or, and, and just at that point, it was just, it didn't matter where we were, you know, we were sitting bumper to bumper traffic, it was just, her and I, having fun with music, we'll get there, we'll get there, and then when she met my family, it wasn't like, oh, we're late, it was like, let me embrace the family, we're here, we made it, and it was just that sort of like, you know, she, she didn't yell at me, she wasn't upset that, you know, her, her makeup is uh, falling off. I don't know, it, just, it was just a great little vibe. So I think a combination of things, just seeing that and seeing how she interacted with my family, for me, family is very important, and it just made it like three hours in the car, I was mad upset, she found me three times, and then after seeing everything, it was just, you know what, this is, this is it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
man who can't keep a pace date at the beginning in particular, including the first conversation, is usually there's usually some kind of red flag there, meaning that he wants to go faster at something or anything, right? So, um, you know, I mean, the fact is that if there's chemistry, chemistry is a really hard thing to fight, and I kind of pride myself on being a little more disciplined than most men, but it's hard to fight, right? So if someone doesn't show that he's trying to bring some kind of restraint in some way, shape, or form, or peace out, either your conversation, or your date, or your drink, or your sex, whatever the situation is, if he doesn't show that he's bringing some kind of a strength, I would, I would use that right away as, because that could apply to a lot of different things. And I know, we're, you know, we have a lot of romantic notions about two people meet, and there's this we're not going to each other and they grab each other and all this and that's all cool. We all know how that works though. You know, I have this great expression, the faster it starts, the faster it ends, and I, go, I have to agree with it because I have not experienced it differently. Prior to being married, my marriage itself, after being married, it, the slower it starts, the better it is. That would, that would be how I would. I think, I think the biggest thing I've seen is a cliche, but I believe it's so true, is actions speak louder than words. The guy could tell you. Oh, I think I said that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so true, though. I mean, on both sides, women and men. But if a guy says, "Oh, I can do this. Or I'll take you here. I'll do that," and he doesn't, it, regardless if you want to go on it, but does he come to uh, for, uh, what he says? Does he come to, uh, come to purpose? Come to push. So, in any capacity, or you know, because, you know a lot of people want to. Oh, I'm this. I'm this. Don't tell me. Show me. You know, when you see that, and it works on both sides. And you know, he's being true to you, and he's coming through on his promises, or whatever it is, and if you remember the little things, you know, if you, if you just wine and dine you, and it's really that's nice, that's going to make you so far. You know, that'll all die out, money comes and goes, and this and this. I think if he's truly really genuine, and he really listens to you, remembers certain things about you, and if you're so nice, you has to respond to whatever you want to do. His actions will come forth, and that's really going to say, you know what, he's a good guy. If he's lying, so I think the action really kind of dictates where you see uh, the um, I agree with Lou and Vito. Um, Vito in terms of pace and Lou in terms of action speaks to how it works. So there shouldn't be a disconnect. Um, a lot of women are attracted to edgy. Um, a little dangerous, a little risky, fun, adventurous, and that's cool. Um, but I think the way he is when he's with you, um, and what he's saying and doing, there should be some symmetry there. I think a lot of people see that there is a disconnect. A lot of women, no offense. It happens with us as well. They see that there is a disconnect and we make an excuse for it. He's busy. Um, he probably forgot to call me. Um, he can't speak at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Never let me see you sweat. 
same thing should apply in relationships. When you're in that get to feel, especially if you're not sure, don't let them take your question. I'm not saying be a different person, but unfortunately there is a game oftentimes that's played, and it's a power struggle. I hate to play that game. I'm an open book. When I like a woman, she knows. I mean, I think we all do. I think we all don't yeah. like, but we also understand. But, but we also understand. You, you can't play the game a little bit. You yeah. know? Um, but if, if you have to walk away, if you have to, no matter how, it could be a hot July summer night and you really want to see him, he's supposed to call you at 8, it's 9 for 10. I'm busy. I made plans. You're home alone. Excuse me. Corny. You really want to be with him, but I made plans. I'm sorry. <laughs> Try me next week. Make him, make him chase me. And I also add on top of that, you know, um, too much mystery. You know, like you should know certain things about him. If I were to ask him, you know, what is he, what kind of stuff that a normal person would know about someone else, you should be able to answer that. Um, if he's evasive. So if you ask those questions and he tries to say to change the subject or you know, he basically has like a steel layer that doesn't allow you to penetrate through that's just a concern, you know. Those things you should be uh, paying attention to. All right, we're gonna do quick fire and have just one of us answer just for the sake of sake of time. Um, this may be a fallacy, but it's been my experience that women who are opinionated, strong, and know their mind, that seems to be repellent to a lot of men. Or um, a little more um, a little softer, mm -hmm. um, or more so definite in their opinions. And I'd like to know, I guess, for one of you who's going to answer, <laughs> I'd love for it to be all of you, what, I mean, that's been my experience. How do you experience being strong and forthcoming and... Um... I think it's a great question, and um, my response would be, be as opinionated as you feel necessary, just make sure your opinion is informed. Because yep. men get really offended if you start forming opinions about things you don't know all about, which might have to do with him being a little too mysterious, but you should let it rock and roll. Just make sure you know all the facts. And, and also, you know, you're in the, the opinion, being opinionated, uh, just, I think the softer part is more about not being as confrontational about possible difference of opinions or, you know, difference of standards. And I think for guys, we understand, like, we love discussions just like anyone else, but if like we're gonna constantly butt heads because we're so we're opinionated, it's just not fun. We can lose the attraction for you. So that's really the true definition of being soft. You know, it's less confrontation. Hey guys tell me if they can engage with them the first ten minutes, whether they want to date a girl or keep her home. How how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Is the rule on who pays, who doesn't pay for a second, third, fourth, fifth date? When does it when does it happen? Because when you're on dates with men, you almost feel like they're avoiding grabbing the check, as in. The man pays. Yeah. The man. The but what pays? Pay. But what's the price? Okay. What is the up to what extent? So okay. Third, so, fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll break it down. <laughs> break it down. So, the man will always pay for the date. However, there are going to be times where guys are going to see if you are actually going to offer to pay. Knowing that he's going to pay, he will still see if you'll reach for your purse, whatever, and he'll say, no, no, it's on me, you can get the next one. He may still say you may get the next one and still pay for the next date. <laughs> but he just wants to see that you're willing to contribute. But I heard that that's from somebody I heard of a coach said that if you don't want to pay, then you shouldn't reach for it because then you're actually showing him, I'm willing to pay because I've done that and they'd be like, all right, you're half the next time to say. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I've 
really do want to pay. <laughs> more, it's more about the action than the actual work, right? So the action is you reaching for your purse as if you're going to contribute to the chat, not to pay for the actual chat. So if all you have to do is really make the motion to go for the guard, for your, your purse. Okay, That's so then it. you say the second date you should pay for if he pays for the first? No, I'm just saying, you know, he, he's, 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 going, he's going to dictate. He's going to dictate at the end of the day. I mean, he might be the kind of guy that wants to pay for all the dates, you know? But just show that you're willing to contribute. And then if you're reaching a point where you feel uncomfortable, like, just say, hey, like, it's on me, you know? And and grab it. Even if it's just a couple of drinks, you know? But just as long as you're, you're showing that, that willingness to contribute, it's going to be enough. I mean, he's going to make the decision a lot of times anyways, just because that's how most men are. But it's still up to you to like, gesture to contribute. Why is it that he always takes? Why? Yeah. What was that question? Why is that he always takes? But we went all into the main well, case, and I wonder why. Because we pursue you. It's very rare that... Why, I, why does a man open the door for a woman? Right. Chivalry. Why should he? Right? Yes. I mean, that's all right. Why does he just have your object? He really can do that. So why is it, you know, it's all kind of on the same. Um, we, we ran out of time. We do? We have 10 more minutes. Oh, we do? Okay, cool. So then we'll keep going. Alright. Yes. Call me. I just got back from a date. 
I need to know what this is about. Here it is, folks. Um, um, so it, it can happen, but yeah, I think it's, it's very much an individual thing. I think it's cool when you have someone to whom you're very close who is of the opposite sex, whose opinion you respect, and you can run anything by him or her. Um, because then it's, it's your buddy that is a person from whom you're getting an honest opinion. But yeah, it, it, it can happen, but um, you just have to make sure that communication is clear, it's honest, because there are guys that will pretend to be your friend until you really need a friend. And when you're weak and vulnerable, they strike. I hate those cats. <laughs> yeah, the patient, I hate those cats. It's like, I'm the cat that will let you know, I like you. If all you want to be is friends, fine. If you have a boyfriend, great. When I see you next week, I'm going to ask you, do you still have a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> and if we end up friends for 20 years because you have a long term <laughs> in 21 years, and you still have a boyfriend. <laughs> I think the hard thing for women is sorting out the men who like say they want to be friends who are actually but who are then are actually really friendly. And uh, I don't know, that's not that's like a whole other workshop. Actions. Yeah, actions. That will dictate. So um to say we're going out and it's been like five or six days, the sex is great, we get along, we both are feeling it, and I know there's something there. When do we have the talk? And how do I not make you afraid of it? The talk. How do I not make you like freak out? Can I say that? Yeah, you can. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, hi. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I, asked, I asked if I could take this this conversation or this question because I, I literally had this conversation around two hours ago. Oh, that's <laughs> why <laughs> You say, look, after three months, you're my man. 
<laughs> and three months come and he's still around, then he knows he's your man. And you tell him, look, it's been two months and 29 days. <laughs> <laughs> judgment to determine what that time is for you. Start off with the positive. Let them know, hey, you know, you know, these past two days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they've been amazing. Uh, I enjoy spending time with you and you know I'm excited to see where this is going. Um, you know, but in the meantime I'd love to know like how you feel about the situation and your thoughts on where you'd like to see this go. You know, and it's, it's, instead of just like asking him the question and having him make a definitive answer, you talk about it, and you let it come out, and then you have, and that, that way you're making the decision together, not just like he says, "Oh, we're together," and then all of a sudden you're like, "All right, so we're together." Do you know what I mean? Like, share the responsibility of determining where the relationship is going to go together, because that's where you guys are together. Can I say one quick thing? Yeah, we're timing out. is important too. Don't wait until like you just finished having sex. No. So what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we're doing round two. That's it. <laughs> don't, 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 don't ask. Ask when everyone is level-headed. Ask when everyone is clear. Don't ask directly at the sex. But don't think because he just did something. He just made your, your toes curl. That means something more to him than it does to you. It might not. He just might be a toe curl. You know, communication is very important because that's when you're going to actually hear the, the logical truth that comes out of that, right? Like, we're going to tell you the truth no matter what. You know, we're not really great with describing things. We're not great at being like emotionally connected in terms of the words that come out of our mouths. But we're going to tell you the answer. So as long as you communicate and you're willing to have that conversation, you will get the answers that you're looking for. And then you have them follow up with their actions to, to make sure that they're congruent. All right, well, I want to give you guys, you know, thank you. See you on the